Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. God is about to move their right at the face of it, but they never believe it will happen in their lives. The Bible says, blessed is she that believes. Unbelief is a dangerous spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Unbelief is able to make the word of God as powerful it, as it is of non-effect. He says, if you hear his voice, he says, harden not your heart, as they did in the provocation in the wilderness God gave them a word they doubted God's obsession much more than being worshipped is to be trusted God's obsession much more than being worshipped is to be trusted you don't sit down and use your philosophical scientific understanding can God make a way in the wilderness he said is God able to do this and we go to school and when we finish school for many people we become very educated and then we become very 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 unwise spiritually because we train ourselves to be so scientific in our approach and then we incorporate our intellectualism even to the things of God so when God says I would do this say, no 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 God according to the intelligence according to this research and that research and god says nonsense he upholds all things by the word of his power hallelujah unbelief unbelief is a dangerous spirit it can turn any man regardless of the spiritual potentials you have it can reduce you to ashes unbelief and number two illumination illumination the bible says weeping endures for a night but joy comes with the morning the difference between the night and the morning is the rising of light the bible says jacob wrestled with him all through the night and he said leave me for the day break it he said no way i will not let you go till you bless me and he says what is your name he said i'm jacob he said your name shall no longer be jacob it will be israel for as a prince you have fought with god and prevailed and the Bible says his tie was touched and then the sun arose and he called the place Peniel. You see, when you come to church and you just sit down, you are casual about it. Let's see what will come. If, if you say word for amen, we say amen. If you say word to, for falling down, we fall down. If you say word for rolling, we roll up. Are we together? You see, if you say word for laughing, we laugh. If you say word for crying, we cry. At the end of it, we hug one another, we share the grace and hope for next week. Nobody grows that way. Praise the Lord. You have to be very intentional about the word of God. When the word of God is about to be released, that's when Satan starts working. Are we together? All kinds of things. When the word of God is coming, that's when Satan rises with all the demon spirits, planting distractions, planting familiarity, planting pride planting carelessness and at the end of it a word that comes that is supposed to set you free and take you to a new dimension becomes profitless see let me tell you something the word of god is not a charm it's not like a genie a charm you put in your pocket and then it just works independent no the word of god must be engaged to produce results Please, I, I think you need to understand this. Many, and, and this is the problem with charismatics. We think that because we're in the dispensation of grace, the word of God will automatically work. For as long as it has left the mouth of God, it must produce results. You are really joking. Really joking. The Bible says the seed, good seed, in all the soils, it was a good seed. There was never a problem with the seed two there was never a problem with the sower but the soil made nonsense out of the seed to an extent that birds could come and carry the seed with no fear satan does not fear the word coming to you he fears your receiving it 
and you're acting upon it let me tell you satan knows the word more than many people his fear is not the arrival of the word in your life proximity with the word does not produce change but satan fears when the word begins to give you understanding the moment you begin to have understanding of scripture satan becomes afraid because with understanding you will now begin to take accurate actions and when you take accurate actions you commit god's integrity to whatever the issue is let me tell you something satan's fear is that's why he he may try to stop bibles but his a bible reaching you is not satan's concern that's why you don't see any demon saying stop bible from reaching him no devotionals have it messages have it his fear is not the arrival of the word in your life brothers and sisters but when your heart is determined to engage with the word ah that's it satan will raise every kind of thing to destroy you because the word not understood is the same thing as the word not available write this down the word of god not accurately understood will produce the same result as the word not being available and it's terrible because that you have access to the word and someone else who is wallowing in ignorance you will think you have an advantage because the word is near you but you find out that the results are the same so you, you have to desire understanding not just that the word comes to you you must desire understanding there are so many arrogant people in the body of christ who will claim because they have been around the world for a long time i've been a pastor for many years i got born again 1991 i got born again 1980 this and that and they feel that because of their constant wallowing around an environment where the world is it means that they have received it hallelujah please pray one more time and say lord give me understanding let me get this thing once and for all. Give me understanding. Lead us along eternal highway. We want to walk in the ways of Jesus. Show us the ancient path. Lead us along eternal highway let me add one more prayer line a uh, prayer point i want you to pray with all your heart and say father let my life produce results cry it before god please don't be too proud to play this to pray this prayer pray with all your heart you know that your life is not producing the result you desire don't come to god's presence and argue god's presence is not a football cinema where you come and argue and say oh god i'm coming to see if what you are saying agrees with what i know that, that is nonsense pray and say god my life must command results this thing can work it was designed to produce in my life i'm not a barren soil open my eyes let this thing work in my life let it work in my ministry god let it work in my family please pray inside outside online pray pour your heart into this prayer pour your heart into this prayer lord i've been listening to this thing for 10 years and it seems there is a blockage from hell stopping me wherever i want to understand something comes and distracts me my life is paying for it show me this thing make it plain unto me oh god for the sake of my children make it plain unto me for the sake of the ministry you have given me make it plain unto me for the sake of the assignments you have given me make it plain unto me for the sake of your glory i've been around it but i take responsibility lord i've not understood how this thing works show it to me afresh 
show it to me afresh i've even taught it i've written books about it but open my eyes i am willing to see i'm not a rebel Keep praying. Keep praying. Please engage your heart. Don't play games with your destiny. Engage your heart. For the sake of those who are depending on you. You may be the only one in your family having this access. Don't trivialize it. The salvation of many are tied to your understanding this thing. You've got to pray seriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, I want you to sit quietly tonight and listen to me with all humility and with all your heart. Please. You see, when you see me talk like this from the depth of my heart, I wish that God can open my heart for you to see it. Are we together now? It is because I know that no matter how sincere you are, sincerity is not the seed for what you are looking for. Praise the Lord. You have served God with all your heart. Let him show us something that will help our lives. Let him show us something that we will use and wipe the tears of nations. But when we are careless, you see, God, God is a very meticulous God. When he comes to you, he does not cast his spell before swine. Just that his presence is there does not mean you will be changed automatically. He discerns the state of your heart. When you come with an arrogant philosophical heart let me see what he has maybe there are one or two things god can add to me that attitude robs you of the fullness of what god can give you martha martha you are worried and upset about many things he said one thing is needful he didn't say to listen he said to sit it's a sign of rest concentrate pay attention when they were about to see a miracle he said tell all of them to stop all this running around sit down by 50s if you are too proud to sit down there's no bread for you you don't eat the bread standing while the bread is coming you are busy doing other things see let me tell you something i promise you in the name of the lord if you pay attention to what i'm teaching you your life will step into a state of rest you will find out that most of this running around is because we do not know the keys a door does not open to any key that you are holding a key does not mean that's the key that opens the door life was not designed to be the way many people are taking we run helter skelter and we think because we are running helter skelter that's where it is we've been trained conditioned by an environment but god is saying this is wrong sit down listen sister brother just listen at least listen by the time the message is over you can now choose to receive it or not but give it a chance to enter your spirit hallelujah when the word is coming that's not when to gist that's not when to ping huh that's not when to send text messages that's not when to download videos that's not when to research languages oh this is a new english language and you waste your time being distracted you see i say these things because that's how satan cheats people so they spend years in his presence and then they can even quote what the man of god is saying but their lives show that they've not gotten this thing father give us understanding tonight i pray oh god that you pour your heart onto us tonight let us see light through your light our hearts are open we submit to your word we're not here to argue with it we realize that your word is final authority in all things and we humble ourselves we truly truly humble ourselves we tremble at your word we let it train us we let it build us and you will be glorified in jesus name amen and amen god bless you again for your glory part two 
we're rounding up we started last week considering a series that challenges us to allow God to be glorified in our lives and um, we took a dimension of it last week how that self is the motivation behind many of the things that cause trouble in the society please if you've not listened to last week's message I challenge you and I plead with you it's free on the internet and with our media department get it and listen to it you will need it is a very powerful message I told us that the coming of Jesus is not just to bring a new testament when you meet Jesus today he's not going to discuss old and new testament there's only one question is going to ask you who sits at the center of your heart it has to be self or Christ and last week we challenged ourselves that the hallmark of the Christian experience is a life that has been replaced by Christ completely enthroned in your life hallelujah so he's not one of the many important things I challenged us that the reason why we do so many things in the body of Christ for many of us largely is, is self-centeredness but that when your life becomes an instrument for his glorification listen that there's no limits to what God can do in our lives hallelujah I really challenged us when Jesus walked the earth all his concern listen the concern of Jesus was for your glory not for my name for your glory father the hour has come glorify now thy son that thy son will glorify you when jesus came although he was god he never seemed to talk about himself he only spoke about himself with respect to his father anything you are doing that is not for god's glory no matter how spiritual it is it is complete nonsense and will not glorify god your life must be an usher that reflects him why do you want to marry so that people would know that i've come of age no that's not consistent with the motivations for which god gives people miracles why do i want a child because i'm tired of people calling me not barren and we have to be careful because our cultural settings pressure us to want things because there are many points to prove why do i want to be blessed so that my enemies will know that my god is alive that looks very good and there is a place for that but the truth of the matter is that that desire to prove a point will crash you down it has to be for his glory the worship team sang it powerfully for your glory so why do we preach for his glory why are you on that job for his glory when your life becomes a reflection of god's glory there's no limit to what he can give or make out of your life praise the lord and um, we want to take it a little further tonight you will be so blessed and i pray that your heart will be opened in jesus name galatians chapter 1 paul was speaking to the galatian church verse 24 23 24 please galatians chapter 1 let's hurry up media so that we can do much today as god grants us grace galatians 1 I'll read 23 and then we'll read 24 together it's projected it says but they had heard only this was Paul speaking about his conversion and how the news spread among the brethren believers but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preached the faith which he once destroyed 24 I want you to read it with all your heart one to read one more time there are many ways God can be glorified one of the ways the Bible shows us that God can be glorified is in a person and they glorified God not just through me they glorified God there was something they saw about my life and when they saw it they said no God you must be glorified and tonight I want to challenge us along that line since we had discussed last week that the the hallmark of the Christian experience is not just doing things it's not even singing worshiping fasting praying doing all of these things as spiritual as they are it is getting to a point where Christ be enthroned but then we must understand that much more than Christ being enthroned he wants our lives to be a reflection of his glory that's how he gets the glory he says and they glorified God in me hallelujah this is a system 
for God to be glorified because God is in heaven and cannot be seen with the physical eyes we are his representatives the Bible calls us his ambassadors and because we are his ambassadors we promote his interest we are the reflection we give men who do not know God an idea of what God is are we together just like um, when I look at you I may not know how your father or your mother looks but I can suspect I look at you and I say wow it means your father can be this can be that and the day I see your mother I say no wonder you see the similarity so God expects that he our father who has not been seen people we should begin to give people ideas of what he is the fullness of all that is contained in him should already be experienced through our lives and in our lives let me show you something Jesus said in John 15 John 15 verse 8 we'll look at it in King James and then if we can get amplified that will be fine John 15 verse 8 Jesus was speaking and this is what he said listen herein is my father glorified that means in this this is the pathway to giving my father glory if you ever are interested in seeing my father glorified this is the road to follow like you teach someone how to cook and you say look if you want a delicious meal of jollof rice this is what you do so he's giving us the pathway say hearing is my father glorified read on that ye bear much fruit not little fruit much fruit so shall ye be my disciples i love the amplified rendition is it possible for us to have it oh it's not possible amplified puts it in a very very beautiful way amplified actually connects it and it says by so doing it is in your bearing fruit you prove that you were trained by me i didn't watch a lot of movies but there used to be these movies about kung fu fighting and um, the little I know about those movies, every master had children, all these small boys that he trains around. And occasionally, they have competitions. Is that true? Where different schools come. So, the masters don't fight. They train you and sit behind. And those who they train will compete. When they beat you and they whip you, you don't get angry. The one who trained you, is the one who gets angry because it means your school is bad it means it's not good so the pride of the master they bring their best uh what they call it their best fighters are we together and when when the other person is beating someone else you see the master nodding in agreement that's right i taught him this i remember that skill that that is me that's what i would have done there i would have punched him in that exact way you got him right and when he wins he run. he does not run out and just he runs back to the master and say job done as you taught me i broke his leg i destroyed him the bible is saying god is watching i have given you the word i expect something it's like an investment i made on you and god is watching my reputation is at stake at the mercy of your living out the fullness of all that i am and so he says i am waiting satan also releases his arsenals we meet in a big stage called the earth here and god is standing in heaven and satan is saying you drove me but watch what happens watch the nonsense i'm going to make out of those you claim you died for and then he whips us with everything from sickness to failure and then he not only whips us he educates us into believing it is god and to increase the mockery we now turn and say lord i thank you because this has to be you and satan says god how about that i told you if i don't get you directly i look for your image are we together now hearing is my father glorified that after a season of training you he gives you access to the word he now begins to watch when your life begins to be a reflection of his dominion when your life begins to be a reflection of his excellence when your life begins to bear fruit your life now begins to testify so when someone reads in the bible and says ah god is faithful he looks around where is the scripture i can relate with this that scripture it's not first corinthians that scripture is called pastor alpha he's a life a living epistle 
that explains that scripture so the testimonies you see that you know why we clap you know why god was also clapping in heaven because their lives all those who came here their lives are testaments of men and women who engage the word and it produced results so why do we clap we clap because we are saying satan shame unto you are we together now satan you try to kill that lady but she's standing and walking on two legs you wanted to ground her legs to walk on wheelchair forever but something about the word she engaged the principle and it brought that result so god is glorified that's why it is called a testimony that means the only way god is glorified is when your life becomes an unending script of testimonies that reveal the multifaceted possibilities in god that your life can be a book someone can read and say my god you mean god is this mighty i never knew but haven't heard of what has happened to a jimmy i know god is mighty hearing is my father oh they found it when you bear or produce much fruit listen it says my father is honored are you seeing that now and glorified and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers hmm. when you give birth to a son who does not look like the father and the mother do you know that that child can create argument one day the man can call the mother during a heated conversation and say look there's something that's been bothering me for 12 years i am deeply concerned about the way this guy is behaving and how he's looking is there any story you want to share with me my heart is open why because that child is not reflect it doesn't look like the father doesn't talk like the father does even there is nothing about the father not even the mother so they begin to ask a question are we together so god is counting you know we brag with his name and he expects that something about our results should have his stamp on it if you walk in julius badger you should be able to show me their id card one day otherwise i know you are a liar and you are a crook are we together if you mold block as a julius badger worker you should be able to throw it up and it should not break on the ground that's how i know that you are not the person who just did that thing and, and i mean if you did it with julius Berg, it should come in with excellence but we claim we know him the jimmy we claim we have met him we even claim he spoke to us and then our lives show we don't know him at all i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good I will worship him forever. Love him forever because this God is too good. See, our lives are supposed to explain scripture. Our lives are supposed to be an explanation to every aspect of scripture because Satan's assignment is to prove that everything about God is a lie. His statements, his resurrection, his goodness. When you say God is a good God, Satan says, all right, me, I don't talk too much, but I act. How many times have you heard Satan talk? Satan is a good actor. We talk too much. Satan says, you keep shouting God is a good God. I will wreck your life into pieces and then you show me the goodness of God. And God says, forget about Satan. I have created a system that if you act out, you will stamp Satan in a way that you will prove that what I said is true. But largely we ignore God and then we never get the results. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If the only reason why you want results is because of your ego, you will never be serious about it are you hearing what i'm saying you know let me tell you something and i admit i'm sorry if i sound proud but one of the gifts that god has given me i cried for it and god gave me one of the gifts that god has given me to bless the body with is balance 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 is the most scarce resource among men of god not revelation not apostasy the biggest problem with preachers is imbalance the ability to construct truth so that it is communicated within the jurisdiction of its relevance 
And the danger is that our societies are a reflection of the ideologies of different men of God. You can see that from 1985 to 1940, this, when this man of God held the pulpit, this is what he taught a nation. They thought like that, this is what they became. Imbalance is as deadly as error. Are we together? So when we begin to communicate the truths of scripture, it is important that we must approach scripture with a view to bring him balance so that the bride of Christ can be built in a way that she is equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in height. I was discussing with Eddie while he drove me here and I was telling him, I said, you look at us in the north. Now I will not mention states, but I mentioned a few states. I told him, you see all the traits. It came from the church. We've not interacted so much with the world. We are victims of the sermons of preachers. That's what made our parents irresponsible. Some of you as you are seated now, you love God. But you had to beg to death for your school fees. And your father has not even called you to ask you whether your school fees is paid. And your father is a pastor. So imagine somebody he has been mentoring for 10 years who is about to get married next week. He's going to reproduce that same result. Imbalance is a dangerous thing. So I train you in the aspect of prayer. I train you in the aspect of your spiritual life. You climb scripture, but I do not teach you the principles of the word. And you think because you are excelling in one area, you trivialize another area. Let me tell you how to know a man of God is arrogant. The moment you trivialize the contribution of others in the body, it's a sign you need deliverance. No matter how anointed you are, it's blindness. You need deliverance. I was in Yola, I think, when the, people, the uh, uh, radio station wanted to do an interview for me. They were so happy I had come for a great crusade. And they were asking me a question. And they said, man of God, now that you have come into this city, you have come to do, you know, great and mighty things, this city will never be the same. And they were asking me a few questions, the secret of your anointing, what do we expect? And I told them something. I said, I will never discuss my success and impact as a man of God outside of the universal contribution of the church in yola there are men and women of god doing mighty things for god we may be in different dimensions but we are a team building together so i will not come to tear down what the pastors are doing to mean you guys have been doing nonsense here i come apostle joshua selman i've come to show you the rubbish you see that's the mistake all over the world you watch it on tv and you see men of god with their pride they approach truth as though they are the ultimate custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom and you know my fear many of us young people are gullible we are running away and it's clear that certain areas of their lives are bankrupt because they have refused to allow the holy spirit step there so we see people who are prayer warriors, but they are poor, they are dying. So they are bribing here and there, but they will keep quiet and then come and make noise. And then we have others who money is their obsession, is their God. They never even get it. They are on their way to hell. They trivialize every kind of thing. Let me tell you how to know a good church. A man of God who has been given the gift of balance or knows how to outsource relevant people in the body of Christ to create what his grace cannot provide is a good church to be part of. Everybody say balance. Those of us here in ministry or trusting God for ministry, it must be your heartfelt prayer. Seek balance more than oratory seek balance more than oratory the ability to speak grammar is nonsense if what you are giving people is rubbish balance i will never pastor people who will be imbalanced it's a covenant i made with god i will teach you everything to build your life holistically you will you can be a prayer warrior a miracle worker a man of character a billionaire a kingdom addict that's right that's how it should be he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city equal in length equal in breadth equal in height no exaggeration that's the lamb's wife any other thing is not the lamb's wife so there are many of us seated right now we are victims of the imbalance of many sincere men and women of god whose messages we have listened to are we together now maybe they have been your pastors growing up 
maybe they are your mentors and spiritual fathers and whatever it is and i love the body of christ but you have to be careful there is no single man who has the blueprint of all the dealings of god we see in part and we prophesy in part so i must be able to have the unashamedness to let you know as a body although functioning in the office of the apostle that that office gives me the privilege of oversight of the dealings of god as revealed to a dispensation but even at that it cannot be in isolation i'm a product of many anointings I'm a product of many graces. I have sat down to pay attention to people. Some of them I don't even like, but I listen to them with an open heart to find out what dimension was committed to them. That's the secret of growth. This pride, this unilateral pride that you catch a dimension, you say, oh, for me, I've caught a dimension of kingdom wealth and prosperity. And when you hear them talking about the word of God, you say, no, 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 no. All I know is that I'm a businessman. It will land you in hot water i'm a prayer warrior ah this and that and that is prayer prayer i know prayer can do everything and before you know it you're like do you know how many believers are frustrated they don't just have the courage to come out that's why our states we left our states to the devil that's what i was sharing with him when we we're coming most of the northern states are largely they do not have adults who understand kingdom at the helm of government. Anybody does everything. It came from the church. It is that lack of teaching that can make any Tom, Dick and Harry get up and bring up any kind of thing against the church. Because there are no strategic people. We are there wallowing away. Please pray. I feel like we should pray and say, Lord, I insist that my life will be balanced. Lift your voice. I insist. Sharato Sakataya. Lord, where I've been a victim of imbalance or where I have communicated the same, sincerely, I pray that you help me. Please cry from the depth of your heart. I receive grace for balance. I receive grace for balance. The Bible says all scripture, not part, all scripture, not New Testament, all scripture not old testament all scripture is god breathed all scripture inspired by the holy spirit and is profitable all scripture is profitable for reproof for correction for doctrine for instruction in righteousness all scripture all principles shared in the word of God are for the benefit of the church. All scripture, lift your voice and pray. Lord, I close my heart to imbalance. I open up my heart because I know that therein lies the key to my victory. Therein lies the key to my being useful to the kingdom. I will not walk in the error of imbalance and I will not mislead multitudes. pray correct my imbalance correct my imbalance it's made my children beg for bread correct my imbalance it's made me rich but lukewarm spiritually correct my imbalance it's made me trivialize spiritual exercises correct my imbalance hallelujah Please be seated. Matthew chapter 5. This is a very powerful teaching already. Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16. The words of Jesus teaching at the Beatitudes. This is what Jesus said. Ye are the light of the world. Jesus is speaking now. How many of you know when Jesus is speaking, you listen to him? Greater than any prophet, greater than any apostle, past, present, future. Jesus the apostle of our faith he says ye are the light of the world you know i love jesus you know we never study what he really taught the people we just know he taught them we don't pay attention to what he taught them this is jesus now having a conference three days men were on the mountain hearing jesus teach and in one of his sermons this is what he told them ye are the light of the world then he says a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid 
next verse says neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel it says but on a candlestick and it giveth light to all that are in the house read on then it says permit your light permit your light permit the fruit of the illumination you said you fasted permit what came upon you from the fasting to so shine before men you claim you are titan permit the fruit to so shine before who not angels before men that they those men who have been mocking your god will see your good not good intentions replace the word good works with one word results let your light so shine before men that they may see your results right and then glorify your father see how god is glorified let men watch you from the beginning of your engaging the world usually they'll be laughing at you when you are doing it like noah noah being warned hebrews 11 being warned of rain he ran he trembled with fear gathered gopher wood for 100 years he was building they were laughing at him stupid man you just threw away your career just because you had the voice of a ghost but he was engaging it when the last animal entered god locked that door and the bible said the heavens released their water the earth released their water whoever was in between was a sign that he was disobedient the same way the bible says the heaven of many people will be brass and then under will be iron do you know what it means to stay in the middle of brass and iron that they may see your results god is interested listen please brothers and sisters your primary motivation behind getting results should not just be a pressure for achievement are we together now this is the mistake behind just um, now there is a place for motivating people don't get me wrong but this is the the mistake that many people make if the entire scope of your teaching is just to motivate people so you make them do great things for themselves when i realized that my success is also a message that enthrones christ i i stopped paying attention to only my secret place i started paying attention even to my results because both your personal growth and the results you produce the bible says it can glorify the name of christ when we heard all of them coming to testify i saw some of you standing i saw some of you clapping with all your heart jesus was being glorified they were thanking me but really jesus was being glorified are you seeing that now because something was taught they believed it they applied it it worked for them hearing is our father glorified pastor alpha when your results begin to glorify god so the way you glorify god is not just by singing alone you can sing songs but god wants your life please hear me everyone god wants your life to give him glory as a father by the time you have preached on the principles of fatherhood and then people watch your life your children are responsible are we together now there's food in your house you are not worse than an infidel because you can cater for your family you are responsible there's peace with your wife no boxing anybody in the name of that's how we do it in our village you see christ is being glorified someone comes to your home and reads many scriptures without opening the bible he knows that jesus is the prince of peace has never believed a man and a woman can live for two years without quarreling and they are seeing it for the first time your light is shining before men they are seeing it and they are glorifying the recession has been whipping and biting people hook line and sinker when someone comes to your house and you hold the hands of your wife and say look let's squeeze he's been crying the child is, is i mean there's a problem this child is about to be thrown from school how much is the school fees Forty thousand. okay take how much is your rent again One hundred and twenty thousand. okay the lord has led us this is one hundred and fifty thousand. and you say at this time of recession sorry is it borrow or give no 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 not borrow the lord bless you freely we have received from him freely we give 
Madam, are you in agreement? Absolutely, I love my husband. That person lives with that money and a message. That recession is not a personal language. There are people who have been exempted since. It's not just this year. They were exempted since. Are we together? When people are dying left and right like chickens. Dying left and right like chickens. You have a dream. Someone slaps you. You wake up from your head to your toe is paralyzed. The doctors check they tell you well something is wrong or nothing is wrong and then you are dying are we together now something is mocking God there and then all of a sudden you find out something in the world and you engage it and you clear that devil off your body are we together and you get up like our sister was standing strong you have demonstrated something the victory of Christ hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah hallelujah you have won it all for me death could not hold you down you are the reason you seated in majesty you are the reason king hallelujah hallelujah you have won the victory after me when I produce results Jesus is glorified say it again when I produce results Jesus is glorified I want you to say it for the last time convincingly when I produce results Jesus is glorified let me tell you make no mistakes about the fact that God wants your life do you know how obsessed God is with results the two two expressions in the Bible showed that number one was the cursing of the fig tree he came because the tree is eating from the earth is that not true connected to the earth and it was green Jesus was hungry he ran there and found out the tree had been deceiving them and he said he cursed it and he said no fruit will grow from it again and by the next day it withered number one number two was in matthew 25 he used a parable to show how that he does not waste resources he gave unto one five talents is that true two talents one the other foolish one said he went to bury it and then when jesus came instead of him to say i'm sorry i was careless add one more year and i will show you i'm serious he said i know you that offense is the hallmark of men who never get results they are angry at God and they are angry at those who are producing it so they create theological explanations to excuse they are not producing results I'm sure he had been saying let Jesus come I will see when he came he said I know you you are a hard man you like reaping where you did. so it's me you are using as a donkey you see his mindset he was not a steward he wanted to be an owner i know you you want to use me to build your ministry so i decided that uh, i even am you are even lucky that i buried it here is your talent and he said depart from me he would have said depart from me lousy and proud man he said wicked one two unprofitable servant cast into outer darkness where there is crying and gnashing of teeth look how jesus is grave about a life that is barren in the physical when a man gets married to his wife especially in africa when they give you two weeks they have tried after two weeks everybody is looking is she coughing no then somebody will just joke and say we are waiting for junior they are speaking a subliminal message after six months 
even the man the woman begins to be concerned are we together two years three years they now tell the man marry another wife in other words we hate unfruitfulness and in as much as you pay dowry for this woman return it and marry another woman that's how much in our culture we love results but when a life is barren we say it's the will of god and we create stupid explanations justified by scripture i've told you the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything that's why you can find the bible in a herbal shrine and the man will open to something psalms 2 and say the lord will laugh and then after reading it now concoct the charm and say take it and, and watch it that is still a charm are we together now god is interested in your results please make no mistakes about it when you walk in divine health and the older you get the fresher you become god is glorified critics may not be glorified but God is glorified. And how many of you know there is only one person you owe explanation to your life? God. Not critics. Not those who understand you or not. That's none of their, that's their business. God. Be glorified. When other people, they say, um, now young people are having high blood pressure and they test you. And the doctor says, it looks like you're a 10 year old child. You say, you are right doctor. You are right. Age is just a number. The word of God renews me. Is it not in your Bible? They that be planted in the house of God. He said they shall flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. Not wrinkled and dying. Whipped by life. No. Are we together? How many young people in Nigeria? Look at it. Do you know? Um, I, I Sometimes, do you know how people are suffering in Nigeria right now? And are you seeing how several of us preachers are so unconcerned about the plight of people? We never bring relevant teachings that help to address their pain. A man treks with his wife and five children. Loyal. He's a sanctuary keeper in your church. He treks with his wife from a place maybe like Paladin and treks and comes and they are scrubbing the church with joy. Hoping that you would teach them what to bail them out. And then you come up and trivialize their problems and say it does not matter the most important thing is that you serve God and God says no no you are making me selfish the kingdom works when you seek him first but then there is a provision for your welfare too otherwise why will we not call God selfish the theology that we propose if not well balanced will make god look like such a selfish god we may not have the courage to say but it looks like lord everything is about you so my whole life what is my own and god says i'm not like that i'm love while you were yet sinners i gave something for you if i offered my son will i not much more with him freely give you all things in other words if you are not getting it is your pastor it's not me joshua Selman is lying to you somewhere You go to churches and watch people come and meet the pastor and say pastor five of my children their school fees are not paid i love you i'm the prayer band leader in my church my rent has expired and he looks he say look that's not the issue the most important issue is what shall separate you from the love of god that's true and after praying because the pastor himself is not rich enough or too greedy to do it he may have the money in his account but he's too greedy to release three hundred thousand and will not teach the people what happens do you know most times this kind of wrong teaching the only people who benefit are the pastors because at the end of preaching that error i'm standing with a nice suit there's food for me oh. i don't know whether there's food for you but there's food for me after koinonia this night i don't know whether you people will be trekking but all i know is that there is a car taking me home are you seeing that i don't know whether you are going to be sleeping outside i will be lying down under ac enjoying myself i must be a wicked man of god to be walking in that dimension and not respond to your pain who lives in nigeria now and ignores the reality of the fact that people need the dimension of god that can respond to their succor they call religion the opium of the masses they call it a strategy to take advantage of the masses because it was wrongly communicated everywhere the gospel was received it brought civilization 
it not only built men spiritually it changed their level say amen. amen i look at many of our mothers and some of our elderly people who are here and i look at the sacrifice they pay to wait this late there are some of you as you are seated right now you are young people maybe just working or a student or a graduate but your loved ones five of them they are depending on you to take care of them and you are not getting the key the little ten thousand you are getting is pushing you and now pastor because that's what we do as men of god we now say there is a contribution everybody is going to bring seven seven thousand you have ten thousand I forced you through messages and courses to bring three thousand to bring seven thousand the remaining three thousand you are in trouble and you are dying Edrimi, members are crying a good shepherd lays down his life does not keep his ego and allow people to die anybody who loves god and loves his people should if you cannot give all of them money share with them the principles and let them know that when you rise out of recession god is glorified and they glorified god in koinonia God is being glorified in several ways. You come in, you find people inside and outside, thousands following online. People say it does not matter. God says it matters. It matters to me. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Our King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, Let our King be lifted up through our lives. Let my King be lifted up. Oh, down results are not accidental please write it down we have agreed that it is important for our lives to bear fruit we have agreed that our results glorify God God is not only glorified in our worship and our sacrifices which is important he's not only glorified when we enthrone Christ at the seat of our lives he's glorified when we bear much fruit write this down results are not accidental semicolon they are the results of walking the mysteries of the kingdom you have to write this down results are not accidental they are the product of walking the principles the secrets the mysteries of the kingdom many results never happen in business results don't just happen in marriage results don't just happen in education results don't just happen in ministry in leadership results do not just happen which which debunks the fallacy that has been proposed for many years in the church if god wants it done he would do it it looks spiritual but it's very dangerous the heaven of heavens belong to the lord the bible says says but the earth has he given to the sons of men and he gave them a command he says and he blessed them and saying be fruitful multiply replenish subdue have dominion so if anything is to happen in my life i must be a contributor to making it happen see let me tell you something admit this sincere truth and your life will change nothing of value is free nothing of value is free it is either paid by you or paid by someone for you nothing of true value bishop oedeko made this statement many years ago nothing of value nothing of value is free that's why you don't pay you pay school fees even for marriage as free as it is you pay dowry 
they write a list and give you even if it's your uncle that grew up with you every day and say uncle i've been looking at your daughter he says all right get a clean sheet of paper buy rice buy yam you would think you will be forgiven no no matter how much you are forgiving he will pay in kind in cash or both nothing of value is free meaning if you are not ready to pay the price for your success forget about it there is a price please understand this don't let anybody indoctrinate you into believing your life will change in the sweet by and by there is a price for the outcome of your life what you see today by the grace of god was intentionally done there's nothing accidental about what god is doing by his grace and there are many men and women here by the grace of god i had the privilege to see their lives i saw them engage these things and i see the results that are speaking now say my results must speak say it again my results must speak results are not accidental they are a product right you must engage something engage something you must do something there is always something to do good master what should i do to be saved that's the freest thing we know in the new testament salvation but here's how a man got it good master what should i do believing is doing something believing is not cheap it takes it takes the labor of the word for a man to believe as free as believing looks you have to get it good master what should i do to be saved that's a good businessman no wonder he was rich what should i do the poor one just had mercy on me but the wealthy man knew he must do something he must engage something Psalm 25 verse 14. What is, what, how are results produced? What is really the mystery behind results? In the kingdom, please write this down. Results are produced when we have access to and understand secrets, comma, mysteries principles results are produced when we have access to and understand secrets mysteries principles the laws of the kingdom were designed to reflect the justice system of god and the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne so the bible says this david a man who was a mighty man never conquered in any war great man did several great things for the kingdom this is what he has to say the secret of my exploit is that the secret of the lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants ah, there are secrets brothers and sisters how many of you have a jimmy's wife is here excellent excellent um baker confectionery person she can make anything cake if you want her to draw your face she can draw it on the cake i mean anything at all you want her to draw koinonia she can draw it on the cake absolutely fantastic but do you know that if i meet hope now and i say hope show me how to make cake she will show the general thing because i'm not serious most likely because i didn't pay for it as she's talking i'll be answering the question sorry sorry this that's the teacher so she keeps those things as secrets and there will be a condition for her to reveal it it's worthy of being revealed but not to everybody so god hid certain things they are not in the outer court he calls them secrets there are things that are at plain sight you see it but there are things you will read your bible and never see it they are called the secrets of the lord the bible says they are with them that fear him and he will show you so god will call you like a conference room you know how you meet a millionaire and he says you've served well come i will take you to a room you've never gotten to and i will show you brothers and sisters you see this my life 
is a product of this secrets mysteries god will take you and tell you look this is what produces this when you do this it will happen when you do this this is how satan will strike forget about him just do this one and it will take care of him you rise up from those secrets and say i have it look when you say you have dominion it's not that you are a talkative dominion means you are privy to an understanding the american president moves you don't see him moving with bulletproof around try to shoot him before your gun gets there you are dead because there is a secret you don't know there is something about u.s intelligence that is beyond the plain sight you insult him in the secret someone knocks your door and says you are needed in the police station you say me what did i do you say well just you, you will find out because there is an intelligence system do you teach americans u.s intelligence no they are americans but they don't have access to that intelligence there are people who are taken to a camp that is never shown on tv and they train them rigorously there's something they call war college in nigeria is that true they take men there only god knows what happens just like there are secret prisons when you are a capon and you are a nuisance to society they drag you it's inside the river the prison is inside the river you escape is still the same thing you die there are we together the secret things brothers and sisters what do you know that gives you confidence don't do bold face before life if you are not holding anything don't stand before pharaoh if you have not seen the burning bush you will die like a chicken hallelujah let me show you something please sit down job 29 long reading 4 to 20 please are you learning something this night results are predictable results are not accidental seeing then that god is glorified when my life produces results then i must pay attention to the principles and the mysteries that are responsible for producing those results here's what job said job he said as i was in the days of my youth huh? read on when the the secret of the lord there was a time i was a poor young man and God, I did something that made God come to me. And he said, Job, come. Let me show you something. Let me show you what makes people influential. And he showed him. He said, the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. Like a library that you read. Let's see the effects of his access to that secret. Reading down to 20. Quick reading, please, media. Help us. Verse 6. He says, help, help him, please. When I wash my steps with butter what brought that effect secrets and the rock poured out rivers of oil the rock does not oil, but there is a mystery that makes it happen when i went out to the gates holding these mysteries brothers and sisters he said when i prepared my seat in the street eight the young men saw me accessing this mystery and the bible says they hid themselves they said this guy is not a normal human being what is he trading on that is producing these supernatural results and the agent arose and they stood up do you know what it means for an elderly person to stand up before a child remember as a young man the princes refrained from talking and laid their hands on their mouth verse 10 the young men saw me and hid themselves uh, you are going back again please help us the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth uh-huh when the ear heard of me it blessed me brothers and sisters this is what happens to a man who accesses this thing any man and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me next verse because i delivered the poor that cried when god was teaching me those secrets he showed me something so every time i saw the poor i didn't sympathize with them i delivered them there was something i did to the poor the fatherless and him that had none to help him uh-huh the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me someone was about to die till i showed up i did something and he blessed me and i caused the widow's hearts to sing for joy 14. i put on righteousness and it clothed me 
my judgment was as a rope and a diadem i was eyes to the blind and feet was i to the lame uh-huh i was a father to the poor and the cause for which i knew not i i was humble is part of the reason why i was great every time i saw result and i did not see it in my life i didn't argue and explain it away i humbled myself like a scientist and i searched it out 18 okay 17 and i break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil from his teeth that's authority brothers and sisters when i searched it out i found something that granted me access to break it in the, and then i said i shall die in my nest in peace and i shall multiply my days as the sand part of the secret something was shown to me of how a man can live a fruitful life and how i can add to my days hezekiah did it there was something he touched that multiplied his days that means there's something you can touch that will shorten your days you are supposed to live 100. You do something, it takes it to 85. Some of us now have done it to 40. You better learn what takes it back. Learn what takes it back fast. Before you find out you have two more years. You learn it. That is in your Bible. Please, let's go back to 18. 18, please. Right? And I shall multiply my days. I will do it. Ah, like saying I will fry egg I will multiply my days see how we fear death yet a man was saying do you know in all of in all of Job's trouble he never talked about death in other words he knew that look look we are discussing life here it's just that this is the worst form of life but death is another law just leave that one these guys trivialized Satan they made nonsense of him our generation is so bankrupt of secrets so Satan masquerades as such a great man I always give this example have you seen someone lying somewhere saying his father is a director he's a CEO just because nobody who grew up with him knew him the moment he sees you coming and you know him you say this guy why are you here you are here to bust my tire now Satan only talks when there are people with ignorance there are some of us when he sees us he will refrain because we know you are number one you are not omnipresent you are not omnipotent you are a liar you are a thief you work with people's minds if I, have, if I have a dream and I see somebody with gun wanting to shoot me and all these funny things, if I get up, I'm not even going to pray about it. Not because I'm just doing bold face. I understand that Satan, without the cooperation of your mindset, his hands are useless. If your mindset limits the word, why wouldn't it limit Satan? Your mindset limited the word of God. How much more Satan? So all, all those things are nonsense. You see, that revelation alone gives me sound sleep. If an owl is crying in front of my, my, my window, it can cry till morning. As far as I'm concerned, you're a creature. You're a creature. Whatever spirit is in you is not recognized. When an owl starts barking, then I'll come out and check because it's unusual. But for as long as you are doing what you are doing, I will sleep. Gone are the days you come out and say, in the name of this owl, I'm tired of you. my root was spread out by the waters listen to this and the dew lay all night upon my branch 20 my glory shabalakataya was fresh in me and my bow the symbol of my strength and authority was renewed this is a man who gave a secret and he said the reason why this happened was that the secrets of the Lord were upon his tabernacle. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. A king had a dream, forgot the dream and the interpretation and wanted to kill everybody because he was angry. And something happened. Daniel chapter 2. We're reading from verse 15. We'll jump, 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 jump. I'll show you the scriptures. 15. So they were they were going to kill Daniel and his you know these friends and all of that and he answered and said unto Ariok the king's captain why is the decree so hasty from the king then Ariok made the 
the thing known to Daniel the king was angry anybody who cannot tell me the dream I had I will kill him 19 and Daniel went in 19 19 then was the everybody says secret then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision and Daniel blessed the God of heaven read from verse 20 we'll continue so Daniel went to bed and saw that secret Daniel answered and said blessed be the name of God forever for wisdom and might are his next verse next verse please down to 22 he and he changed the times and seasons and removed kings and set up kings he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding 22 he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him that's the god we serve and that's what he can do to men read 27 and 28 27 and 28 i'm trying to show you these scriptures listen daniel answered in the presence of the king and said the secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men come out find out whether you are part of these people so you just know up hand that you will never find the secret of god it's not for wise men men in their wisdom the astrologers come out the magicians come out the soothsayers all these men cannot see it show unto the king 28 but there is a god in heaven hallelujah <laughs> ah, yeah. the native doctor cannot see it oh. he will claim he can see it because he will concoct charm and a voice will speak through the pot he will manipulate your mind into believing he's in absolute control Daniel said don't mind them they can't see it he said but there is a God in heaven and it is in his character to reveal secrets he revealed secrets and made known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall happen in the latter days open my eyes let me see will you open my eyes let me see open my eyes let me see open my eyes full of men and women who did ordinary things and then once and again certain strange men just appear and it's like a graph extraordinary exploits by the hand of God then you find ordinary men again then someone will show up in a generation then you find people doing whatever again and then you show up let me tell you something I have spent my life like an astrologer watching the stars I have spent my life searching out the mysteries of the kingdom since I found out that these were the things that were responsible for results I don't trust men I don't trust their philosophies 80% of the knowledge circulated in the world is useless to your life and destiny and eternity I don't trust them I don't trust the things they say in the news I go to the Word of God show me the mystery that will give me grace show me the mystery many people let me tell you before god granted me grace to walk in the anointing there were many people who were talking about the anointing when i looked at their lives not to condemn them i knew these guys were not they didn't get this thing but they will never understand and you can meet them and ask them uh -uh, but why didn't this result happen instead of them to say well i don't know this far they say look it's because of this i didn't trust them and i went to god i said lord there must be an answer the thing i did not know i searched out i searched out lord why are some people filled with the holy ghost and others not lord why can a preacher be so anointed filled with the holy ghost yet his church never grows why is it that people can do publicity put balloons and it will never happen lord why is it that a man can serve you so much and yet be broke and worried about finances and god started referring me to his body various men and women who through their sacrifices have accessed these things though we are few 
We're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. Listen. Though we are few, that's what I want you to hear. We're surrounded by many. We're surrounded by many. Surrounded by many. Surrounded by many. They are all over. Your pride has stopped you from seeing them. We're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. When people tell you they have not been sick in a long time, you don't believe it because you think it's a lie. No, no, no. It's a lie. When people tell you they have not been broke, they will never be broke again. You say it's, it's not true. You're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before you are not the first to be attacked by witches my father's mother well i don't know they, they said she was a christian i know she was an idol worshiper praise god are we together my father not my relative you see when you hear people talk you think they don't know witchcraft me that demons pressed personally it's not like the one you are not seeing anybody you are just feeling hands i saw them i they looked at me i looked at them they pressed me shouted jesus nothing happened i was still a preacher i shouted jesus shouted blood of jesus it had no effect on them but preachers told me just shout jesus something will happen i did it nothing happened the secrets of the lord there is more to that statement than just you have been shouting it nothing happened don't we have few <laughs> we're surrounded by many the same way the bible says they shall lay hands on the sick brothers and sisters be honest the last person you laid hands on what happened you even you you were laughing at yourself but the bible says if you do it you see when the bible tells you to do something and get results and you do it and don't get results there is more to it there is more to it the same way you see someone driving you think he's just putting gear and firing you enter and the next thing you are in the hospital because it's more than what your eyes are seeing father as i read scriptures what am i not seeing open my eyes see when you carry the bible just like a scientific book bring ye all your tithes into the house and you have been tithing but nothing has happened because all you have been doing is giving god tight see let me tell you something brothers and sisters your attitude is the tray upon which your tithe must be presented upon for to be accepted a tithe can be rejected there is an acceptable worship honor an attitude So many people stand with their envelope you look at the preacher and you are angry lift it up father in the name of jesus you just throw it inside the plate and you are angry these wicked people my tight you they say did you tight you say yes no you didn't tight you brought money to church i guarantee you you just gave tight you didn't bring you brought money to church but there is somebody who goes with understanding lord you brought this to me first i love you two i'm obedient i know you are not a liar so i bring this with understanding and you tie it are we together now with understanding do you know many people give there are people who come to give give here as if they are bribing they just say apostle god has blessed you and then they are putting their hands in their pocket and then they squeeze my hand and want to say what is this this is not a bribe if you are giving give it with understanding let me speak a word of prayer don't give as if you are bribing me i'm not looking for the money you see the attitudes we display these are the things that disqualify our giving a man preaches you want to give him honorarium you wait till he enters the car then you just look and say sorry pastor and while other people are talking you just say take 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 We're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. It's time for you to start learning why these things are not working. Brothers and sisters, I've opened your eyes that there are secrets. 
there are secrets there's a secret that brings a crowd to a ministry the secret is not publicity I, we have proven this with all humility and by the grace of God if all you want to do is publicity you will waste money on posters and flyers and balloon and everything there is a secret this is to the miraculous it's not just shouting you know a lot of people see us shout here and then they go to their ministries it's a clash and symbol everybody at the count of three you are going to shout Jesus one like a champ two oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. And everybody shout and they are looking around because we'll do it again and then at the end they say okay don't worry you didn't fast you didn't have unbelief it's not in all those motions there is more than meets the eye are we together there are three areas I want you to contend to know the secrets we're going to pray three areas especially in this season God wants to be glorified through the church number one number one the secret Accessing the presence and the anointing of God upon a man's life and upon a corporate body. The secret, the law that governs the manifestation of the presence of God and authentic unction upon the life of a man and upon a system. You must cry and contend to know the secrets that are responsible for this. Number two. Are you ready? You must find out the secret. Listen please, very careful. The secret to living in divine health and longevity. Write it down. What is the key that governs not just divine health but longevity? There's too much fear of death. I began to study. There are seven things that I studied in my life. Trusting God for the secrets. But of these seven, these three are the ones the Lord revealed to me. And said, let my people get this knowledge in these three areas. I show you the key to peace. Especially in these times of turmoil health and longevity is there a system in God where a man can walk healthy brothers and sisters if I were pretending this thing you will know by now I can't be sick and come up here and act well you will see it you will know you will know that this thing is a lie I don't count we have doctors all around we've taught it here we're a very responsible ministry I've visited people in hospitals but I'm saying don't be ashamed of your current understanding but content knowing that there is a reality if you don't believe there is a realm of health and wholeness do you believe that there is an anointing to heal HIV do you believe that the testimonies you've been hearing here that people have been healed of diseases that means you don't believe it are you seeing that now how can a man want the healing anointing and you do not believe divine health and longevity is true? It means you are a liar. You are only playing games. If I sit down on a wheelchair for a number of years and one leg is not strengthened and they tell you I can stand up and then the leg will receive strength and you say no 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 scientifically this is not working why should you be given a healing anointing to stand in a stadium and command people in wheelchairs where you have not seen you see some legs they cut someone else's leg to join in the current person's leg yet you believe he can walk oh come on i'm a believer oh. i'm a believer I'm a believer when you dwell in God's presence it's easy to believe when you keep listening to junks and nonsense you will be surprised how you will not believe God because when you talk all the people who are in your area you say no no you are being fanatical you people these Christians but no 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 I am the way I am reality the truth anything that is not me is a lie 
I am reality. Longevity. You need to live long. Listen. Listen. Do you know why many people fear death? It's not because they are afraid of death in itself. They are afraid because they cannot control it. Anything you cannot control, you are afraid of. You are about to travel. Some of you will be traveling tomorrow to various places. You are sweating. Somebody says, come and collect money in Kaduna and return. You say, ah, it's not worth it. Let me travel. Because of 40 minutes drive, let me die. Send it through an account. I will collect it somewhere. They say, my bank is not inside. I say, no problem. Just do it. Fear. I refuse to fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I refuse to fear. There is a mystery that keeps men long. Number three. Wealth and prosperity. Kingdom wealth and prosperity. You must study the secret of financial empowerment at a personal level and at a corporate level. Those of us who are pastors here in churches, you must find out what is the key. I've told you the key is not business. The key is not business. The key is not business. Business is an expression of what you know. Business is simply a platform that gives your understanding expression. Without that understanding, the platform is useless. The key is not business. The key is an understanding, a construction. First in your spirit and then your understanding. And then all the physical avenues are simply platforms, whether job, business, whatever you call them. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Or are you still arguing it? Like many people will argue and say it does not work. By God's grace, I have paid the price to study these things in my own personal life. I still am studying them. But to an extent, I have seen the hand of God. And to an extent, we have seen this even in this ministry. I hate speaking sometimes because of this, because people who don't understand think we are boasting and all of that. No. We will never beg as a ministry till Jesus comes. Never. There's no need. We'll be wicked if we do so. Because he has been faithful. Too faithful. Too faithful. Our dinner is on Sunday. There is recession. Melting people down. Yet we are celebrating our workers. And we are doing it with all gladness. When we shared, we looked at the budget of the dinner. Some of the people, even the leaders, some of them were a bit surprised. A budget that can build house for somebody. You are now using it to eat in one night. That's what happens when you pay attention. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from you. That's somebody's salary for many years spent in one night to tell workers thank you recession is hitting hard and melting down we have never stopped transporting people we don't boast to have arrived but it's a sign that this thing works i'm saying this to encourage you that it can work brothers look at me there is this plague that is sweeping nigeria and sweeping young men young men are afraid Young men that are supposed to be bold. You go to school and struggle for years, but you are still moving around as if you've never seen the wall of a school. Why? Because of fear. Fear looms many young men. What will I do? Someone sent me a text, I think it was the day before yesterday, that he doesn't know why he married. I said, what is, what is the meaning of that? You are sending a text, you don't know why you married? Yet the recession has not started. This thing has been prophesied by several men of God. I say it, I, I listen to the messages, I prophesied it. I told you people, those who are announcing that it's going to come and be over. I respect every, I don't condemn any man and any ministry. But brothers and sisters, I tell you the truth by the grace of God. It is not going to end. Not soon. I guarantee you. It will be worse. I have seen it with my two eyes like I'm seeing you. But upon them that fear my name. The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Therefore shall you discern between them that fear God and them that feareth him not. There is a difference. Hallelujah. We we'll keep rising from glory to glory. May you never lack food to eat in your house. That you have to carry a plate to move around and beg for rice. There is a way you come out. Or that you sit down and you are saying, ah, somebody, a devil just cheaply appears in your dream. Fires an arrow to your body 
and you wake up the next day and all of a sudden you know you are going to your grave let me speak to someone here you are having dreams dead men dead things you are quietly sleeping they are feeding you in the night whether you want to eat or not all those things let me tell you there is a place for deliverance but the greater part of deliverance is access to understanding you know i told you these things happen to me most preachers will lie to you and say it didn't happen most people will tell you lies and say it happened to me brothers and sisters i sleep in the night they press me once it's night night i get afraid do you know it was so bad Ejimi, i can hear people talking physically but i can't wake up no i can't wake up so you are not the first it's happening to the day i caught the light i ran i ran from maybe you here to bz and i stood outside and i begged the spirit to come i didn't cast it i begged it to come it in Zaria it goes to another city when we go I drive it from there you play ball with the spirit city to city that's what light does but many people will not get the light and then they say in the name of Jesus I won't dream you even fast as you are rounding the last fast in ignorance then they come you see the devil can make nonsense you think I don't know that's the experience of some of us three days dry the first day nothing happens the second day says walk you know and then the last day as you are saying amen you just drink orange and sleep just orange and there they come <laughs> they rubbish your three days fasting so you now get up and say kai this man must be using charm this thing is not only fasting there, there must be something there is a key or you now carry your bible and put it in your pillow right carry oil and put sign of the cross on your head i'm not mocking you no I'm, I'm, I'm not i'm not mocking you anything done without revelation is nonsense you can even play koinonia message while he's playing you are sleeping nothing works in itself it is engaged hallelujah praise the lord i remember when i was studying some of the things that god has helped me know now do you know i arrogantly argued with some of them because in my little mind then i felt no these things are not the way when some of these generals wrote these things and i looked at them i said is it really this thing it's not it doesn't match how foolish i was now i look and i i truly see that i deserved where i was if i had known the things that i knew now maybe a few years earlier than i knew them i probably would have been 10 times better than i am and that time sadly there were not many people around who had really gotten these keys everybody was trying some of us had the privilege to be the ones leading people and so as you were leading you were just hoping you were right may you walk with accuracy that if you receive a text now listen you receive a text now as i'm speaking and someone says we're waiting for you in front of your house you must die this night you will see us but we have said something good day some people will just say i feel like praying around here that's what i used to do hallelujah a gentleman went to steal recently in my house he got charm from zaria city tied it got charm tied it they still caught him Can you imagine? While Koinonia was going on, he was trying to steal. They still caught him. He shall put his angels charge over you. They shall bear thee up on their wings, lest you dash your feet against a stone. I know you don't believe it. Just say, oh yes, yes. But you must believe it and say, this is true. So a man looks at you and threatens you and say, if both of us wake up tomorrow, you must die. And you say, you know you will sleep too, Abi. Tell him. The person boasting you are not doing night vigil you too you will be you'll be sleeping for six hours you will not know what is happening where is the angel of death that swept over arrogant egypt and some people did not wake up any man playing with your life and prophesying to you is playing with death in the name of the lord jesus christ don't fear men don't let any man threaten you because of anything you threaten god's elect he suffered no man to do them wrong 
yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm brothers and sisters you are immune but this thing is not just hearsay please every lady lay your hands on your womb prophesy to yourself in one minute and say me and barrenness are like the east and the west we will never meet go ahead and pray there's a reason why i'm saying that lay your hands on your womb and prophesy no barrenness don't let anybody tell you oh it's because everybody is eating spaghetti now we are eating this and cancer is multiplying fibroid is multiplying cause it god is glorified in my body i have no business with barrenness this womb will carry boys and girls prophesy it to yourself don't call what they call conspiracy conspiracy hallelujah brothers lay your hands on your head and say the secrets of wealth must come upon me lift your voice and pray in one minute lord you are showing me the secrets god is giving me a great ministry there's much to do for the kingdom i don't have the time to be thinking about money no it's a cost I don't have the time to leave my assignment leave everything money 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 grant me grace to get this key and move on to do important kingdom things in my life can't spend 60 years of my life just daydreaming and being obsessed about money carnality over money show me the keys let me not put anybody's daughter on that trouble. Let me not raise children and punish them because of ignorance. Please pray. You will thank me for what you are doing today. Lord, I'm tired. This thing has a way. There is a way out. Show it to me. There is a way out. Oh, there is a way out. Hallelujah. Now, everyone, I want you to pray while you are seated. We'll soon stand up. But I'd like you to command every area of your life that has not been working. Don't just command it to work. Say, Lord, the secret to make it work, please show me. Even if it's something that has been taught, but my eyes have not seen, show it to me. Sato Sabalakata. My spiritual life is going down and down and down. I can't pray for 10 minutes. I've tried and tried and tried. There is a devil somewhere trying to stop me lord what is the secret to a consistent prayer life what is the secret to a consistent word life i'm tired of this not studying the word i've been lying to people that i study my bible i know i'm not studying it i don't have an appetite for god something is wrong show me the secret i pray and nothing happens i say the same thing anointed people say but nothing happens what is the key to the anointing coming into my life let me speak and let there be results for your glory pray for your health lord i'm tired i've spent over a hundred thousand on my body this year i've spent over five hundred thousand i don't even know what is wrong with me now i know you desire to be glorified in my body i'm tired of being afraid of death i'm a man of god but i fear death i'm a woman of god but i fear death i fear assaults of terrorism i fear accidents I fear the operations of witches and wizards. There's something I need to know. I'm tired of living in fear. Pray. Pray. I'm tired of going to my village because I think I will not come back 2017. I'm tired that they may charm me. Oh, give me access. Give me access. Give me access. Sato Katai. Access, pray. Longevity. Lord, let me be as, as confident as I am sitting on my seat to know I will live long. Let me be confident. And the secret was revealed to Daniel. 
and the secret was revealed to Daniel and the secret was revealed to Daniel finally pray I must break the back of poverty is my agreement with God is my covenant with God to the fourth generation no one has prospered in my family until they serve idols I will not serve idols and I will prosper for the glory of the name of the Lord I will not serve idols and I will prosper I will not bribe and I will prosper I will not cheat and I will prosper I will not play fraudulence and I will prosper there is a secret that must be shown to me I know I'm a young man but I must prosper employment or no employment recession or no recession there is a secret show it to me oh God now jump on your feet and pray for any other area that has refused to walk I challenge you show me the secret why have I not entered a relationship oh God why are men running away from me show it to me when I gather it scatters when I gather it scatters show me why although I've been delivered I'm still seeing family patterns in my life the failures of my father's house is still reflecting in my life although I'm praying in tongues For the next three minutes, pray in the spirit, blasting tongues. Something must open in the heavens. Something must open. Lord, I must deliver my family. I must deliver my lineage. Tired of poverty. Tired of struggling. Tired of a resultless Christian life. Tired of a life barren of the anointing. Lord, it's not working in my life. I have to admit it this night. Pray, it's not working. Why is it not working? Why is it not working? Why is it not working? I knock on the gates of heaven. I demand an explanation. Nobody is rising in my family. Nothing is working. They serve you, yet no door is open. Oh, pray, pray, don't be tired. Leketeka soto na ba 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 ba. Embretos kapras kalekete. Shakata pras kalekato shadalika. Embreso sete dekete. Mambro zekete kelebo soto ba la ba la ba. Hallelujah. Hearing is my father glorified. When you bear much fruit. Listen. Listen. I want you in the next one minute to pray violently. Knock on the door that controls results. And say Lord for your glory is my, is my turn to testify. I told you nothing happens. For everyone that asked it, receive it. Lord, I've never really had a testimony this year. Why is that so? No one has favored me. No door has opened. No deliverance has happened. Oh, 
Alléluia. 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 I want you to pray and knock on the door of heaven. Your heart is already right with God, I know that. But I want you to agree with God and say, Lord, between now and Christmas, when we celebrate your coming, can you give me a reason to praise your name this year? I tell you, if you, if you obey this instruction and pray with your heart, you will be surprised what my God will do. Lift up your voice and pray. Shabata. Open strange doors. 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 Do it for your glory. Surprise my father. Surprise my mother. Surprise them. I intercede for them. May the angel of your presence reach them. Give them a miracle. Let that cancer be healed. Let that HIV be healed. Let that barrenness be broken. Let her take in before Christmas. Having a child already in a womb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone shout this after me in the name of Jesus. I decree that every force in the heavenlies programmed a sign to stop results from manifesting in my life to discourage my Christian life I challenge you by the blood of Jesus lift your voice and pray ancestral powers yokes spirits ordinances written in the heavenlies projected by witchcraft and wickedness to stop my life from glorifying God to stop results from happening in my life I challenge you I challenge you I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant Hallelujah. Let's take one more prayer point. I want us to release the ministry of angels. Listen. The Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? Let me tell you, hear me. Angels are real. I see them all the time. You will be foolish to believe angels are not real. Not everybody here seated physically in Koinonia is a human being. I have seen them many times as I preach. They sit down like human beings. They are not human beings. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. See, some of you are still joking. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I am an heir of salvation. Therefore, I decree and I deploy the ministry of angels to every area of my life 
to war warfare until I become victorious. Lift your voice and pray. I release your ministry. Release my helpers to come into my destiny. Release favor. I release angels. Over Koinonia. The angels are signed over Koinonia. We release you by the word of God. The angels are signed over God's people. We release you. We release you. We release you. We release you. In the name of Jesus. Bring miracles. Bring signs. Bring wonders. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but let's pray. The Holy Ghost is asking me that we challenge the spirit of fear. Look at me. Listen. Let me tell you something about the spirit of fear. I tell you, fire is burning in this place. Listen. Fear is a dangerous spirit. It stops you from taking God seriously. When God speaks, fear exposes you to the obvious limitations. It's not that they are not there. The obstacles are there. But God's word does not explain. It creates. God will not tell you how by next week you will be holding a million in your hand. Don't be stupid and say, God, how will it happen? Who do I know? Blessed is she that believes. He said, for unto her there shall be a performance. Fear of death. Listen. Fear of failure, fear of not having the money to feed yourself. Do you know it's fear that makes people do all kinds of foolish things? You are afraid before you know it, you sell your phone because you want 10,000 in your pocket. The 10,000 finishes, you sell your trouser. People sell all kinds of things. People have converted and have left God because of fear. In the name of Jesus, I challenge the spirit of fear over my life, over my family, over my loved ones, over Koinonia. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are banished from my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. There's no fear. There's no fear. I refuse to fear. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well. Say unto the righteous, Koinonia, are you praying tonight? Don't look around. Pray. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well. Fear of marriage. Fear of children. Fear of terrorism. Hallelujah. Self time in the name of Jesus. Father every prophecy you spoke over my life from January till now that has not happened I want you to know that I still believe you and I agree with you that between now and December 25th I must receive that testimony. Lift your voice and pray. I wrestle with prophecy. I agree. I agree. You said you will heal my father. I still believe. You said you will heal my mother. I still believe. You said you will prosper my business. Prosper my ministry. I still believe.
please lift your hands i want to pray for you i'm a believer i'm a believer when you dare to believe god and understand what it takes to get the results you need i pray for you in the name that is above all names first and foremost even as you have prayed i challenge every force of witchcraft that has been released over nigeria released over states to frustrate believers and make it look like god's word is not working i command that power to bow in the name of jesus i command that power to bow in the name of jesus number two i pray for you the kind of speed that you have not seen from january to now i ask the god that i serve to give you that speed in the name of jesus that he will perform his word hastily hastily in the name of jesus number three i pray for you with all my heart every secret you have been looking at but you have never really understood you look at it all the time but you are, you listen to the messages help them please but you have not gotten it i speak upon your spirit may an unction chaparatokaya the unction that teaches men things I'm, I'm doing an impartation upon your spirit i pray for you in the name of jesus may that light shine upon your spirit may that light that illumination shine upon your spirit any man on earth who is holding your answer any physical man holding your answer i put pressure upon their spirit they must answer you they must answer your parents they must answer your loved ones i pray for you finally every miracle we have received as a ministry this year whether it is in finances whether it is in increase whether it is in influence and impact i pray for you from the depth of my heart beginning from this night i don't care how short the time is i decree and i ask the lord most high to reproduce that testimony in your life may he reproduce that testimony in your life anyone here hold on please who is sick in any part of your body any nonsense the devil has planted whether you call it fibroid whether you call it menstrual pain whether you say barrenness impotency whether you call it migraine ss as bad dreams witchcraft any kind of sickness right now as i stand here in the name that is above all names may the fire of the holy ghost surge through your body and clear that devil out of your life may the fire of the holy ghost surge through help them please may the fire of the holy ghost my god i tell you i see fire falling on people that's what i see in the spirit fire people are getting healed May the fire of the Holy Ghost surge through your body and clear that devil right now. May the fire of the Holy Ghost, I say it again, standing upon this grace, may the fire of the Holy Ghost surge through your body and clean your blood and cleanse your life. Anyone here called SS, AS, I command that genotype change now. Any stranger you were not born with, if you were not born with it, breast lump, fibroid, ovarian cyst, 
any devil sitting on your body your body must glorify God tonight therefore I curse that devil I curse that spirit I curse that devil I curse that spirit everything that has stopped you from being productive I prophesy to your hands your hands represent they are symbolic of your productivity when the hands of Samson were tied he could not do anything I pray for these hands may God teach you the mystery of profiting in the name of Jesus he said I am the Lord that teaches thy hands to profit and leadest thou in the way that thou should go may God show you the mysteries may he show you in the name of Jesus lift your voice and give Jesus praise hallelujah please keep standing everyone our time is fast spent but keep standing hold on please there are people here right now who you've heard me preach we've spoken about glorifying God your life your family everything about you is not glorifying God number one you are not even born again and you know the kind of family you are coming from that already there are things that can destroy people's lives wherever you are you have heard my voice and the Holy Spirit is telling you this man of God is talking about you you need to come out and hand over your life to Christ or peradventure at one point you have given your heart to Jesus Christ and sincerely you know from your heart that for whatever reason your life has gone haywire and you want to run to him please we have two minutes for you wherever you are it's my pleasure to lead you right now wherever you are inside and outside leave your seat quickly and come you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome are you still coming or you are arguing with Jesus the Holy Ghost is speaking will you still argue with him keep coming God bless you those outside don't say I'm far the devil is a liar leave him and run and come run to Jesus like there's fire on the mountain if you're joining them keep coming there are people outside Please hurry up and keep coming hurry up and keep coming hallelujah thank you so much for those of you who are out those still joining hurry up and come say after me lord jesus those of you standing please say it seriously say it again lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe you are the son of god this night i have heard your word and I need help I ask you to help me I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior I receive your life and I declare that from today I'm a new creation I'm a new person in the name of Jesus I pray for you now in the name of Jesus father the Bible says as many as who come to you you will in no wise cast away father change the lives of these people transform them sincerely in the name of jesus let this not be some emotional show that they are coming but let them mean it from their heart may your life be transformed in the name of jesus amen and amen now follow the lady waving her hands there's a lady waving her hands please follow her and um she would communicate a few details to you in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus, thank you for your patience. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.